Ned Block has been um, one recent vocal opponent of the higher order theory. So here's a similar kind of experiment uh, from as similar to Fernandez Duque et al., which I mentioned earlier. This is the one that Ned Block actually talks about. So you have your three conditions here, so, um, basically getting at what was in uh, uh, figure B in the other graph. So in the first condition, it's just the one we are familiar with. You present George and not George. Um, they cue them. They say, what about this one over here? Uh, this change, people say no. Okay. So now, of course, in the second one, they cue people where they're going to pick. And people are very good at this. They recognize the change. Of course, they were attending right there. So, of course, they recognize the change. Now, the interesting condition is C here. And this is analogous to the other one. Um, so instead of... Um, um, queuing them at the first one, they queue them during the mask, uh, and then people are, of course, still very good uh, at determining which one changed, even though here they don't have a representation, not, there's nothing there, so which seems to imply that they had a representation of the experience. And of course, in the Fernandez Duque thing, it's the same. Um, you highlight both of them, say which one changed, they're able to access that information, so they're having some kind of if they need to access it, they can. So something is there which they can access. So now Block has argued that there's a problem here for higher order theory. So here's what he says from his recent paper about the mesh between neuroscience and psychology, presenting what he calls the phenomenological overflow problem. So he says the subject has persisting experiences as of more specific shapes than can be brought under the concept required to report to compare those specific shapes with others. They can all be brought under the concept rectangle, but not the specific orientation concepts which would be required to make the comparisons. Now, what exactly is supposed to be the problem here? Well, the subjects are reporting that they have an experience. They're saying, well, gee, I see a bunch of shapes. I just don't know if this one is different or not. So they're not able to bring these specific concepts to bear. But they report having an experience of all the shapes, and we should believe them because they've been looking at this stuff uninterruptedly. So... If they have experiences that they can't report, they're not being able to report is evidence that they don't have the relevant higher order awareness, the higher order thoughts. And David Rosenthal does admit, um, and in fact he thinks it's a point in his favor oftentimes, um, uses it as an argument for the higher order thought theory that uh, you're always able to report conscious states that you're in. So if that's the case, well, it seems like these kinds of results, Block says, um, suggest a counterexample to the higher order thought theory. Namely, there's a conscious experience that you're not, you don't have the higher order thought, you're not conscious of. Now, Stanislaw Dehaene has responded to this in a series of papers. Um, and Block talks about this in his Mesh article again. He, jokingly refers to it as the refrigerator light fallacy. So what's the refrigerator light illusion? Well, you might think that the refrigerator light is always on simply because every time you check it, it is on. So every time you open the refrigerator, the light's on. You might think, yeah, then it's on all the time. Well, of course, the, there's a mistake there. You can't be sure that it's on all the time. Um, when it's closed, in fact, we know it's only potentially on. It's not actually on. Um, so it's a mistake to think that something that's potentially the case is actually the case, and Dehaene uses this um, to respond to Ned's challenge. So he says, subjects think that phenomenal states are always on, simply because they are when they check. And the basic idea that Dehaene has is that subjects are under a kind of an illusion, um, in, in this case, where they think they, they, have, they can access this stuff, um, and so they think they have a conscious experience. They're saying, I see all of the rectangles, but they, they consciously don't. They erroneously take their ability to access that information if they wanted to, to it actually being phenomenologically there. Now, Bloch's response is just that the... The hypothesis that they're phenomenally conscious states that we're not aware of better explains the subject's reports. I mean, remember, they're saying we see all of the rectangles and generally we take subjects at face value. And there's no real reason to think that they're under some kind of an illusion. And Block spends time in the paper um, arguing that they're 
that there's nothing like a normal illusion going on here at least so if there's an illusion it's a weird illusion and you notice that it would be a very strange illusion because these people are saying no i have an experience of all of these rectangles and the Dehain says, no, you don't. You just think that you have an experience of all the rectangles. You're really wrong about that. What you really have an experience of is, um, well, not all the rectangles, one of them or something like that. You could access information about the other rectangles, but you don't have the experience of that. Well, I think that this is wrong, and it certainly isn't... Um, uh, it certainly isn't something you want to say that they're having this kind of an illusion that they think they're having an experience that they're not having. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. But of course, there's not a problem here for the higher order thought theory. And that's why it was important for us to go through the Dretzky material earlier, because the kind of response that the higher order theorists can give is exactly the response that Dretzky got from Rosenthal oh so many years ago when this debate first started. And Bloch himself admits that the subjects are able to bring the concept rectangle to bear on their experience. Once you do that, the answer is pretty obvious. So um, what's going on? Well, you have a first order state. In the first order state, uh, you can be conscious of in various respects. That was the lesson from change blindness to begin with. You're conscious of all the shapes, but not conscious of the shape in the respect of its being the thing that makes the difference. So here you're conscious of all of the rectangles, um, but not in respect of their specific orientations. So there's no illusion that reporting the experience that they're actually having. They're conscious of a bunch of rectangles. Now, of course, that they can get the information that they want if they're cued just shows that they have an unconscious representation of the material there. It doesn't show that the unconscious representations are phenomenological because so far we haven't found anything that is overflowing. We found that the uh, higher order thought theory says that they have exactly the conscious experience that they're reporting. So again, just to sort of summarize and take, finalize this, there's me again. Suppose that I'm having this experience, I'm looking at the um, figure from the Landman et al., or, or from uh, Sperling, or whatever your favorite experiment is, and I report, well, you know, uh, I see a bunch of rectangles, but I can't really say whether um, this one is the same as that one or not. Now, what, according to the higher order theorist, is going on in my experience? Well, I have a first order representation that's very detailed. That's sort of what the Fernandez Duque and the Landman um, and Sperling uh, kinds of experiments all demonstrate is that, or one plausible interpretation is that what they demonstrate is that um, you know, we have very detailed representations of the visual scenes, even if we don't have, if we don't have conscious representations of the scenes. Now, of course, I am having a conscious experience, and it's the experience of having a bunch of rectangles arranged in a clock face-like formation. So the higher order thought, which determines what it's like for me, simply specify some of the properties of the first order state, but not all of it. And that's exactly what I report. So there is no problem for the higher order theory. And um, again, we have, uh, our hopes can be kept alive that we can give a, a satisfying account of um, consciousness uh, in naturalistic terms. And now on the other hand, uh, Bloch's argument that you can solve the methodological puzzle um, by looking at which theory gives you a better explanations overall of uh, subject reports and the mesh between all the scientific data. What this shows is that the higher order theory meshes with all the data just as well as any other theory of consciousness, maybe not the first order theory. Uh, so we haven't really found any reason to prefer first order theories over higher order theories. Okay, thank you.